Bismillahirrahmanirrahim In alhamdulillah Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah Brothers and sisters and friends and respected Ulama and respected elders I greet you with the warmest Islamic greetings of peace Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Today's talk is going to be on transcending the isms Because in the 21st century brothers and sisters we are affected and we are challenged by a tsunami of different world views trying to engulf our hearts and minds as Muslims and there are so many isms and schisms to talk about but I just want to talk about four which I think really affect the intellectual and rational foundations of our deen these are number one scientism number two atheism number three humanism and number four naturalism i'm going to explain what these mean but before i get into my presentation i want to be a little bit cheeky and i want to talk about something called neoconservatism very quickly just around the corner in washington dc we have a very interesting individual called pamela geller may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide her and she has created a huge campaign against islam with big bill posters saying that Islam and Muslims hate the Jews, were anti-Semitic. And I think we need to actually do something about this. And we have to present a positive, articulate, warm, compassionate challenge to such filth, fallacies and misinformation. So I just want to give you some tips on this issue. When someone argues and says that we're anti-Jew and anti-Semitic, all we have to do is actually tell them what Jews have said about Islam. If we go to academia and we really become nuanced and we understand what is going on here, we will understand that the Jews have nothing but good to say about Muslims and Islam. Let me give you some references. Number one, take Jewish academic historians. We have a book by a Jewish historian called Amnon Cohen. And Amnon Cohen wrote a book called A World Within, two volumes. And he collected a thousand records under the Uthmani Khilafa, the Ottoman period. And these thousands of records were the records of the Qadi of the judge, the Islamic judge. And he concludes as a Jew, that although the Jews had freedom to go to the rabbinical courts, the majority of the cases, they freely chose to go to the Qadi because they knew under Islam there was justice. Number two, another Jewish historian, Zion Zohar, he wrote a book on Sephardic Jewry. He said thus, when the Muslims crossed the Straits of Gibraltar and the Iberian Peninsula, the Jews saw the Muslims as liberators from Christian persecution. Number three, another Jew. You can find his letter in Philip Mansell's book, Constantinople. And this Jew is a rabbi, and he's writing in 1453. What does he say? Oh, my brethren, oh, my brothers, come to the land of the Turks. Rich are the fruits of the earth. We live in peace and freedom, and we're not oppressed with heavy taxes. Number four, another Jewish historian, a 19th century Jewish historian, Einar Gratz. He says the Jews live favorably under the Mohammedans. And I could go on and on and on. The point is, I think we must, we must be empowered with some information to challenge this ridiculous critique from a neoconservative like Pamela Geller. And hopefully I want to agitate your minds and let you go freely into our history to see that actually we were the saviors of the Jew. Take for example, Yuri Avnery used to be a Zionist journalist this journalist said that every honest Jew must thank Islam for the preservation of the Jews so hopefully I want you to become empowered so you could articulate a positive case against this trash frankly it's just trash 